theyeshiva.net. Okay, we are up to Daf Hey Ahmed Bays, all the way on the bottom. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four lines from the bottom on Daf Hey Ahmed Bays. Reb Asi. We learned before that Tveria, Tiberius in Eretz Yisrael, was a place, a city, where Chizkiah read the Megillah in two days. Yudalon and Tesvav, because he had a doubt. What was the doubt? The doubt was not if it had a chayma when Yeshua ben Nun came in, because the Gemara says clearly, there's a pasuk in Yeshua, Perik Yutas, that there were cities in Eretz Yisrael where Yeshua came, and the Jews conquered it. And one of the cities that Naphtali took is a city called Sidim, Tseir, Hamas, Rakas, and Chineres. And they're all fortified cities. And we have a tradition that Rakas is Tveria. The question about Tveria was not if it had a wall. The question is, Tveria is located at the western, uh, at the west of the Kinerets, of the Kinneret Sea, Yam Kinneret, in the Galil HaTachton, the lower Galilee, in the north of Eretz Yisrael. It's at the western side, one of the sides of Tveria, kisses the Kinneret Sea, which means when it says that it was a fortified city, it means three sides. There was no wall in the sea. So the question is if that's a definition of Mukhav Chaim when it comes to Megillah. Lagabe dinim of Eretz Yisrael, Batayari Chaim, it's Mukhav Chaim. But Lagabe Megillah, it's a question why? Because by Megillah, the most important question was was it a protected city? So the question is, what protects a city? Is it four walls, which makes it invisible to the enemy? Or is it good defense, which makes it hard to get in? You see the difference? Is it about invisibility to the enemy? That's what makes it protected. Or is it good defense? If it's about invisibility, this is visible. You have a clear angle, and the, the whole side of Tveria, one side, the west of the Kinneret is open. You could see it very clearly. If it's about a good defense, C is a very good defense. So Bemele, this is before the age of planes and before the Wright brothers introduced aviation. So it was a good defense. And even in modern times, C is a good defense. Huh? Chelayam, yeah, the Navy. <laughs> so Bemele, then Tveria would, fit, would work beautifully. Which one is the issue? Yeah. You have to understand military strategy for this Gemara. It's not so partial. The Gemara is introducing some uh, deep, deep stuff in military history, how it worked. Because generals had to decide these things. When you're building your defense over the centuries, over the millennia, what was the best, uh, the best way of doing it? You know, The French lines, uh, the French lines uh, how long did they protect themselves from Germany in 1940? It, it turned into a mockery. Kav Bar Lev, Israel had a Kav Bar Lev uh, for the Yom Kippur War. It was a mockery. It was, uh, they built it. It was a whole mice. Uh, <laughs> no, here it had three walls. The question was the fourth one. So Chizki wasn't sure how you define it. So he read the Megillah on your down and the Megillah on Tesvav. It didn't say. It says in the Megillah that Jews who live in open cities celebrate your Dalit. There was a b'risa that said about Eretz Yisrael. In Eretz Yisrael, there's a halacha that when you sell a house in a walled city, it has a different status in terms of sales. Over there, the b'risa says that it has to have a wall around and around because the Torah says saviv. But that's concerning the laws of Eretz Yisrael selling a home in a walled city. Here we're talking about Purim. Purim, the issue is not so much a walled city. The issue is that when Ahasuerus would send the troops or when the anti-Semites would come kill Jews, they would be able to defend themselves in an easier way so they felt less vulnerable. You understand? That's what it's about. It's all about war. So here the question is, an island, huh? an island which has a yam all around. Okay, but the, but Tveria has three walls. The question is the fourth. So does that come, is that like a fourth wall or not? So that's why he had a Suffolk, and he used to read the Megillah twice. That's what the Gemara said. Okay? Says the Gemara, Reb Asi, 
Kari Megillah bu Hutzal bar Bisho b'chamisa. Reb Asi read the Megillah in a city Hutzal on both days. Why? Mesapkele mekafes chem mesi Yeshua ben Oni Eli. He had a doubt if it was surrounded by a chayma from the days of Yeshua ben Oni. Unlike Tveria, Tveria the doubt was not if it had a chayma. Tveria is how we deal with the sea. Here he actually had a doubt. He didn't know. He had a suffolk. Maybe it was mukaf chayma mesi Yeshua ben Oni. So therefore, he read on the 14th and 15th. Ikedamar. However, there's another tradition that says, Amar Rebasi, Hai Hutzal de Beis Binyamin, Mukefes Chavim Maisi Yeshua. Actually, a very different tradition. That actually, he testified that this Hutzal, which is in the plot of Binyamin, it's one of the cities that was given to the tribe of Binyamin, had a wall from Yeshua. When they came into Eretz Yisrael, it was fortified by a wall, and therefore, you only read the Megillah on Tetzvav Adr. The question here in this Gemara, and this becomes a very relevant issue throughout all the generations, including our generation, is it sounds like Reb Asi didn't know, and because he didn't know about Hutzal, according to the first version, you have to read the Megillah on both days. If that's the case, Mefarshim ask a question. If so, any place in the world you should read the Megillah two days. Nobody knows. You could say maybe when Yahushua came into Eretz Yisrael, it had a chaymah. So that means any place in the world, unless you have a clear tradition that when Yeshua came and it didn't have a chaymah, you can have a suffolk. Maybe it had a well, people built walls. So any city in the world, and it's a stroller in the world, you can say the same thing. We, how many places do we have a clear Messiah that there was no wall when Yeshua ben Nun came in? You're dealing with a story that happened 3,300 years ago. Literally 3,300 years ago. Is that the case? We don't say such a thing. Right? Another question is, reading the Megillah is not a biblical obligation. It's what's called divrei Kabbalah. It's a mitzvah medivrei seifrim. What's the klal by seifrim? Safek de Rabbanon. Lekula. When there's a doubt in a rabbinic mitzvah, you're lenient. You're not stringent. So why is he reading it twice? You dalad and tesvav. Safek de Rabbanon. Lekula. Safek de Raisa. Right? Let's take a question. A person does, has a suffix if he said Krishna. So he has to say it again because it's a mitzvah in Atayra. But if it's a suffix in Adir Abbanon, you're lenient. You take the lenient side. This is not a suffix Dair Aisa. Megillah is not a biblical mitzvah. It's a rabbinic mitzvah. Why did Rabbi Asi feel that he has to read the Megillah twice? So therefore, the Mepharshim say, the Ramban says, and other Rishonim say, that a city that we don't know anything about it, we just don't know anything about it, what happened in the times of Yeshua? We do not say it may have had a chayma in Mais Yeshua Benun. Why? Because mm-hmm. the majority of cities didn't have a chayma in Mais Yeshua Benun. So we follow the majority. And because we follow the majority, we don't say, oh, maybe it had a chayma, you have to read two days. We do not do that. In Hutzal, and the same is true in Tveria, the way we saw before, there was a tradition that there was a chayma in Mais Yeshua Benun. But by Tveria, the problem was how you deal with the sea. By Hutzel, there may have been another problem. And that is, is the present day Hutzel located in the same Hutzel like Reb Asi was? So you can have three different types of questions. Number one, was there a Chaima at all here? Number two, there was a Chaima. But is this maybe a rebuilt city? You know, in Eretz Yisrael today, you have all these names of cities that are somewhere nearby the original city, but they're rebuilt. Is it in the same location? The Gemara says here that Lud, we learned earlier, Lud is Mukhav Chamez Yeshua Benon, right? Huh? Kiyat Ona, yeah? So in, in Lud, in Lud, they read the Megillah also Yadalad. They read on Tesvav also, but they read on Yadalad. Why? Because Lud was rebuilt. It's not this, is it exactly the same Lud in the same area you could say this was Mukhav Chamez Yeshua Benon? And what if Lud was built a uh, half a kilometer down and wasn't around the Chaimah? You have to read on your Dalit, right? It's true today. Recently, they discovered in Lud, the present Lud, very archaeological diggings, they discovered that it's taka, it's, it's in the area of the ancient city. But still, you, according to most Poiskim, you can't know exactly. And what if you're outside of the Chaimah? Yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm just giving an example. So therefore, that's another Suffolk. That's another Suffolk. Not if there was a chayma, maybe well, there was a chayma, but is this exactly in the same place? That's the, it's a different type of Suffolk. So we don't say every city was Mukhav Chayma, Maybe most cities were not. We rely that it wasn't. 
and Suffolk, besides Suffolk, the Rabbanon Lakula. But here there's a unique situation by Tveria, by Hutzel, that they had a chashash. Because you can't go according to the majority here, because they know that he knew that Hutzel had a chaima. The question is if this is exactly if this is exactly the same place. However, even if he had a suffix, you could still say Sveka de Rabbana Lakula. If it's Sveka de Rabbana Lakula, so therefore you should be potter. Yeah. Some of the Rishonim even want to say that when you have a suffix, you should be able not to read the Megillah at all. Because on your Dalit, you don't have to read, because it's a suffix. On Tesvav, you don't have to read. Because it's a Suffolk. But then it would be a funny thing that all these cities where there's a Suffolk, Chaima, yeah, you're not reading the Megillah at all. So you go back to the question earlier in the Gemara, are they not part of Klai Yisrael? They don't get the Megillah. But it, it, it's actually a funny thing because all these places, you could say, oh, Suffolk, they're Abana, you Dalit, I don't have to, Tesvav, I don't have to. Mm-hmm. So that's why they made that it shouldn't be that way. You should read your Dalit because your Dalit is the place where most cities in the world read the Megillah. And you know why they should be excluded from Purim just because they're guilty that they may have had a war in Moshe Yeshua Benon. So therefore you read your Dalit. The question, why the Asi or Tveria then read both days? So many Mepharshim say, many of them say it was a chumrah, it was midas chasidus, meaning it was an extra pious activity. It wasn't, it wasn't a chiv, but in a place where there's not even a basis to assume so, you b'chlal don't read tesvav, even with a chumrah, even with midas chasidus. This is the famous Ramban, how he explains the Gemara. Do not go walk around and say, oh, this city tesvav, this city tesvav, because we don't know. You don't do that unless you knew there was a chayma there, but you have a doubt, whatever, if it's in the same place, or there's a sea, etc. You do it, your dalit, because it's the majority. It's the, it's the, because the, man. and that's the reason today, and that's the reason today that uh, that there's a lot of cities in Eretz Yisrael that they read two days, they read two days. Your dalit and tesvav, they do it without a bracha, but yeah, your shalayim does tesvav because they know it's mukav chemas yishov benon, but places like Lud, places like Tzvas, Places like Hevron, of course, Tveria, right? Huh? A lot of people, yeah. Yeah. It says that Darizal used to read two days in Swas. It's brought from Darizal, yeah. Over here, there was a basis to believe that uh, that uh, that there was a Chaimah, a Moshe Yeshua Benot. Yeah, Bet Sha'an, Bet Sha'an. A lot, a lot of places in Eretz Yisrael. Quite a few. Four times. Four times, yeah. They do without a bracha, but they do it. Not only that, there's a few places in Chutz Laretz. The place can bring a few places in Chutz Prague, Prague, Baghdad, Iraq, Baghdad. Yeah. Huh? Many places both without a bracha. Yeah, because they don't know. If you make a bracha, you dal it. could be a bracha of atal. If you have to do tesvav, tesvav maybe they do without, yeah. Your shalayim, you do tesvav. Your shalayim, they do tesvav because they know. So you make a bracha tesvav. But if you don't know, yeah. The Benish Chai, if it was from Baghdad, Rabbi No Yosef Ham, the rabbi, he says in Baghdad they used to read twice. You dollar and tesvav, they used to read twice. Prague, Prague, they also felt there's a big suffix that it was Mukhov Chem, Mois Yeshua Benon. Also over there, there was a minic to do two days. The Magen Avram writes that where he lived, this is already Eastern Europe, over there you don't have to do ever do two days because in the times of Yeshua Ben Nun, it wasn't settled. Civilization didn't, didn't, didn't live there. This is uh, northern, uh, you know, up uh, east and north of Europe. He says it wasn't settled. Places that were closer to the Mediterranean, they were all settled. But uh, Iraq, of course, uh, was settled. So Avram Avinu came from. But uh, Magan Avram, it's already dealing with Eastern Europe, 1600s, 1700s. Over there, they say you don't have to be chayshish two days because it wasn't settled. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, concept that even in Chutzlar, at some places, they're, they're machmer. So the Gemara says, Weiter, Amir Rabbi Yochanan, Rabbi Yochanan said, Ki havin Italia, when I was a child, I said something on my own, and then I asked the elders about it. And I was right. What did I say? We learned before that the Sefer Yeshua says there were five cities that were fortified in the times of the Yeshua and the tribe of Naphtali. 
Hamas, Rakas, and Kineris. We touch Rakas as Tveria. He says, as a child, I said to myself, Hamas is Tveria. It's still fortified, but it's a different name, Hamas. Because of the hot springs of Tveria. Tveria has the famous hot springs till today. People go there for health reasons and other reasons. So that's why it was called Hamas. Because Hamim, from the word Ham, hot. Rakas, zu Tzipoiri. Rakas is actually the city of Tzipoiri. Unlike we said before that Rakas is Tveria. Again, for practical purposes in terms of a wall, it's not Negea because Hamas and Rakas both have walls. But he believed that Rakas was not, was not uh, Tveria. Rakas was Tzipoiri and Hamas was Tveria. Okay. Says the Gemara Vaiter. Yeah, Raka Zutsi Poiri. Rabbi Yochanan said, This is what I believed as a child. Yeah, Hamas is Tveria because of the hot springs of Tveria. Raka Zutsi Poiri. Velama Nikrishma Rakas. Mishum de Medalia Karaksa de Nara. Because it's elevated in relation to its surroundings, like the bank of a river is rel- elevated in relation to the river. Raksa de Nara is basically the bank of a river the edge of the river, and it's elevated. Tzipoiri was an elevated place. Rakas is a bank, the bank of the river, and that's what's Tzipoiri. Kineres, there was a city called Kineres, also had a wall, Zuginoiser, this is a city called Kineres. Velama Nikrishma Kineres, the Mesiki Peirik Kala Dechinri. Its fruits are as sweet as the sound of a harp. Fascinating. Ginoiser had such delicious fruits, when you tasted it, it was like going to a concert. You see how the Gemara confuses the two senses, the sense of taste. I shouldn't say confuse, the Gemara connects. What is it called? Synesthesia? Synesthesia? Huh? No, no, synesthesia. You'll look it up later. It's a good word. So synesthesia is when your five senses get mixed up, right? It's like you'll say, I heard blue. You know there's such a condition, right? It's a neurological condition, right? I heard blue. I heard red. You could see sounds, like when somebody speaks, you see it. It's a fascinating thing. The Venezra says, because all the five senses go back to one source. And therefore, they can be interchangeable. We call it in America, it's a neurological condition called synesthesia. I think it affects one in 2,000 people. You'll Google it. But uh, the Venezra claims that was by Matan Taira, that really the senses are interchangeable. Because it's fascinating. It's called Kineris because its fruits are as sweet as the sound of a harp. Whoa, 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 wait. Since when is the sound of a harp sweet? Sound of a harp is pleasing to the ear. But apparently it's very connected, deeply connected. It's fascinating. You would call Tveria what? Why? No, Kineris is a city here. We're not talking Kineris, the sea. We're talking Kineris. Okay, yeah. So he says Kineris is Ginois. It's very hard for me to believe Rabbi Yochanan said this. Now, listen, Rav lived in Babylonia, in Iraq. Rabbi Yochanan lived in Tveria. So Rav is now going to start arguing with Rabbi He's not arguing with Rabbi Yochanan. He's saying it's hard for me to believe Rabbi Yochanan said this. Why? Are you going to tell me that Rabbi Yochanan or anybody believed that Rakas is not Tveria? When a great man dies here in Babylonia, awesome Savdileachi. I heard that in Tiberias, they eulogize him as follows. Godel hu b'sheishach v'shem loy b'rakas. Great is he in Sheshach. Sheshach is Babylonia. And he has a name in Rakas. Clearly, this is a very well-known hespid. When a great man dies, they say, he's great in Sheshach, but he has even a name, a reputation in Rakas. And this is what they do in Tveria. They're not going to be talking in Tveria about Sipoiri, they're trying to pick up about Rashi says Sheshach is Bavel. It's a pasuk Sheshach is Bavel, but it's also Oisius at Bash. Every letter has sometimes ways it could be exchanged. Aleph could become a Sof, Sof can become an Aleph, Base can become a Shin. Right, the first with the last, the second with the second to the last. So Bavel is Base becomes a Shin, the second Base becomes a Shin, and the Lamed becomes a Chav. That's how Sheshach is Bavel. But we see clearly that this was the Hespit. When the coffin of the person who died was brought to be buried in Tveria, there was another eulogy, and the eulogy went like this. Lovers of Israel, residents of Rakas, go forth and receive 
those who died in the deep. Babylonia was situated in a deep valley. So go and welcome Harugei Oymek, the people of Rakas. Again, this is when the coffin came. The first eulogy is about the death. This is when the coffin came. So what do we see? Harugei Oymek. Those who died were killed, who were slain in the deep. So Rakas is Tveri, Nazi party. And the Gemara says, <laughs> When the Bzeda passed away, there was a eulogizer who began his eulogy with these remarks. Now we have to remember that Bzeda grew up in Babylonia. He made Aliyah, Gemara in Babamitsiya, he went and moved to Eretz Yisrael. He came to Tveria. So he said like this, Eretz Shinar Horeviyolda, the land of Shinar, Babylonia, conceived and bore the Bzeda. Hara is conceived, and Yalda gave birth to the Bzeda. That's where he grew up. Eretz Tzvi Gidla Shashueha. The land of beauty has raised her, her beautiful child, her delightful child. Eretz Tzvi is called Eretz Yisrael. It's compared to what Tzvi. Tzvi means beauty. Also, it says that the Tzvi... Huh? Yeah. He has to expand based on his growth. And Eretz Yisrael also expands based on how many Jews are there. And also Eretz Yisrael, it ripens its fruits with the speed of a deer, of a gazelle. So it's called Eretz Tzvi. Woe to her, says Rakas, that her precious instrument has been lost. Shinar gave birth to this giant. Eretz Yisrael, the land of beauty, raised him, and Rakas is now mourning for the loss. But all of these eulogies demonstrate that what? That in human vocabulary, in Israel's vocabulary, Rakas was Tveria. That's Rav's problem that somebody really says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan that Rakas is Tzipori and Chemos is Tveria. Ela, my Rav, Rav said, wrong. Chama zu Chame Gror. Chamas is Chamei Gror, Rakas zu Tveria, Velama, and Kinere zu Ginois, Velama Nikrishma Rakas. Why would Tveria be called Rakas? Shafilu Rekonin Sheba Malay and Mitzvah Kirimen. Even the empty ones, the sinners who live in Tveria, are full of rim, are full of mitzvahs as pomegranates are full of seeds. Rakas means Rekonin, the empty ones. Even the empty ones in the city of Tveria are something special. Malay and Mitzvah's Kirimen. Something very, very special. The Benish Chai, Rabbi Yosef Chaim was the Rav of Baghdad. He died in 1900. So he has a sefer called Ben Yehoyada, a commentary on Gemara. So I saw, he writes here, why Tveria Davke? He says, Tveria was the city of Reb Meir Balanes. And Reb Meir in Kiddush and Lamedvav has an argument with Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yehuda says, when are children called, when are Jews called God's children? When they behave like children. Reb Meir says, Ben Kach, you're always a child. No difference. You behave like a child. You behave like a, an alien. You're still a child. You're still a child. And he says, and a father, a mother, forgive their children. So Mela, the Jews of Tveri, Reb Meir's city, the Allah was like Reb Meir, Malay and Mitzvah's Kirimen. They're filled with mitzvahs like a pomegranate. And I should just say the Rajba says that in that argument, Reb Meir and Reb Yehuda, the Allah is like Reb Meir. Usually the Allah is like Rabbi Yehuda, but ben kach, ben kach, but certainly in Tveri, he says, because this was his city. But Asri, the Reb Meir, the Allah is like Reb Meir, that every Jew is Malay and Mitzvah's Kirim, because the father and mother forgive the sins. So what do you have? You have Malay and Mitzvah's Kirim. That's why, that's why Tveri, because it says about all empty Jews, Malay and Mitzvah's Kirim. So something about Tveri. Another type she says is, the Gemara says in Rosh Hashanah, that Mitveria suddenly he goil, that the Gaul is going to come from Tveri, it's going to start in Tveri. It was the last place where the Sanhedrin were. Over there they were dissolved and it's going to be reestablished in Tveria. So he says Tveria represents the era of the Gula, the time of the Gula. And he's in the time of the Gula, even the emptiest Jews are Malayan mitzvahs kidemen. That's what the Benish Chai writes. The Rambam is buried in Tveria, yeah. From Egypt he came to Tveria. We see here from this Gemara they used to bury people in Tveria when they came from Babylonia, right? They used to bury them like Reb Zayda and the other one. No, but it looks like in Tveria we see... See, the, the eulogy is about people who are buried in Tveria. Some say, because Bavel is on the east and it's north. So when they came from Iraq to Eretz Yisrael, Tveria had a base Tveria was the, the, the location to bury them in. 
So this is this is what Rava says that it's called rakas because Malayan mitzvahs kirim and even the empty ones of Tveri are filled with mitzvahs kirim. Ah? Who? Oh, Rabbi Yochanan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Malayan mitzvahs kirim and yeah, they're filled filled of mitzvahs. I mean, you know how Jews are, so there's many different interpretations. The Armafarshim would say the exact opposite. The Ture Evan says that actually Tveria was known at that time as a place which uh, ill repute, ill repute. There were a lot of empty, empty people. In other words, it was not a good city, morally speaking. But he, the, 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 the Gemara didn't want to, uh, the Gemara didn't want to express it that way. So the Gemara said that why is it called Rakas? Because Malay and Mitzvah's Kirimen. In other words, it was a nice way of saying that it had empty Jews, a Fulurei Khan and Shippa. It's a little tough because the word Rakas comes from Yahushua. The word Rakas is in Yahushua. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, They did true. Right, the question is but Rakas is the Chaposik. A posik in Yehoshua. <laughs> right? Rakas, a posik in Yehoshua. He's saying, why is Tveria called Rakas? Because I feel like Rekon and Shabbat Malay and Mitzvah's Kirim. Unless it's like a Navua. I don't know, whatever. It's interesting. Rabbi Yirmiya Amar. Rabbi Yirmiya says Rakas Shema. Actually, the real name is Rakas. V'lama Nikr Shema Tveria. She Yeshev is B'Taburah Shal Eretz Yisrael. The reason it's called Tveria is, Tveria comes from the word Tabur. It's situated in the center of Eretz Yisrael, in the navel. Tabor is the, the navel in the body. Just like the navel is situated in the center of the body, Tveria is in the center of Eretz Yisrael. The word Tabor, Tveria, from the Tabor is like, you know, the belly button, the navel. But Mela, it's called Tveria. So this is a fascinating thing about Tveria, that it's in the center, center of Eretz Yisrael. L'cha'ira, he doesn't mean, probably he means in the middle of the width of Eretz Yisrael, meaning from west to east. He doesn't mean the middle of the length of Eretz Yisrael, which is from south to north, because Tveria, we all know, is in the north of Eretz Yisrael. It's Tzafon. It's lower Galilee. So L'chayda Tveria can't be in the middle. But it means in the middle, probably from east to west, not from south to north. I just want to know. L'chayda, that's, uh, that's the Pshat. That's what the Tabur means. When you look at it this way, not this way. Right? Horizontally, not vertically, in terms of the map. I think even then it uh, would be hard to say that it's the Tabor, even if you go up more. It's, it's, it's the west of the Kinneret. Galil HaTachton, west of the Kinneret. So he says it's the Tabor. Then he says something else. Rabba Omar, Rakas Shmo. Its name is Evalamanika Shmo. Tveria Shatoivari Yasa. Tveria is a combination of two words. Toivari Yasa mean it has a beautiful appearance. It has a fine appearance. And the reason is, Toysfa says, because it had a lot of orchards. It had a lot of ganim and par- ganis and pardesim, gardens and orchards, and therefore it was a very pleasant place to look at. Toiva ri'i yasa. The problem here is, the Rashash asks a Gavaldik a question. The name Tveria, we know historically, comes from something else. And that is, it was named after Emperor Tiberius. The emperor Tiberius was the second emperor of Rome. He was a successor of his stepfather who was Augustus, I believe. And he succeeded him. Tiberius died in the year 37 after the Common Era, which means 30 years before the destruction of the second Beis Amiktish. He's the second emperor of Rome. He expelled Jews from Rome. He was succeeded by Caliglia, the mad emperor, the Meshuggah emperor, one of the greatest tyrants in history and Meshuggahim in history, Caliglia, who was succeeded by Claudius, and then another few until you get to Vespasian and Titus who destroyed the Beis Amiktosh. So this man, Tiberius, lived a few decades before the Chorban, and Herod, Hordus, Herod the Great, Hordus, right, who died in the year four before the Common Era, a few decades before Tiberius, he rebuilt Tveria, and he named it for Tiberius. 
who was the stepson of Augustus, the emperor of Rome, and he would become the second emperor of Rome. So what is the Gemara saying here? It's called Tveria because Tabor. It's called Tveria because Tiberiasa. Hurd is named the Tveria for the emperor Tiberius. Interesting, no? Interesting question. The Rashash asks this question. And it's brought in Medrash. The Medrash Rabbah brings that it was named Tveria because of Tiberius. But then it didn't have the name. <laughs> He's saying Rakas is the real name. The reason it's called Tveria is because of all these features. Huh? So why is it called Tveria? Because of these names. It's a fascinating idea. But here you see a Gavaldika Yisait. It's a tremendous thing you learn here from this Gemara. The Gemara is being mafalpal in the name. Giving it Hebrew Jewish meanings. Toivari Yasa. Taburish Lerz Yisrael. What? It's not the name. The name is Tiberius, the Roman emperor. Rosh Hashem The pshat is that you see here a tremendous fundamental idea in life. The fact that this became the name of a city in Eretz Yisrael is by divine providence. Hordas did it for his reasons. That's true. But the Gemara says, let me tell you the real reason it's called Tiberius. He Taka may do it for his reasons. But if it's a city in Eitz Yisrael that has this name Tveria, and it's a city that caught on, there has to be some deeper meaning here. I will say, what do you mean? That's not the reason. The Gemara says, that is the reason. That's why it's called Tveria. The way it came down politically in the world is it came with the name Tiberius. It's not a stereo. See, a very interesting thing. The Baal Shem Tev used to say that everything you see or hear is a lesson in life. A lesson of it. What do you mean? Everything you see in here is a lesson. Why is it a lesson in life? Because the fact that you're seeing or hearing it means there's a lesson for you in Avaidah Hashem here. Tveria became a name. Why it became a name? Who just did it for his reasons? But the Gemara says there's a meaning here. There's a lesson here. There's, there's an application. I think that's uh, it's a very powerful idea because historically it's a very strange piece of Gemara. There's other interpretations. There are Bichil Weinberg. You heard of Rabbi Bichil Weinberg, the head of the base Hamedrish Lur Abonim in Berlin before the war and then later in, 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 in Switzerland. He was one of the big oidim of the last generation, Rabbi Bichil Weinberg. Sridayesh. He says the question of the Gemara is that there was a point where Tveria went out of the domain of Rome. Ultimately, the Roman, Roman, Roman didn't have control. Why did they still keep the name? They should have changed it. So he says that's what the Gemara is explaining. I don't know, you know, you could say they kept the name. A lot of names, you keep it. Why is August called August? Augustus. And why is July called July? Because Julius, Julius. And they wanted a name, they wanted to give one of the months Tiberius, you know that. Huh? This guy, Tiberius, Tiberius, this guy, they wanted to give him a month. But he's known as the depressed emperor. He was known as the depressed emperor, if you know a little Roman history. And he told them, Usually the emperors wanted to be gods and everything, months, and they, everything had to be named after them. But he said that what happens if you're going to have 13 emperors, what are you going to do? <laughs> so he, he didn't get the name of a month. Tiberius didn't get the name of a month. But listen, he got better. <laughs> We're still talking about him. It's not a cash. He named Tiberius after the uh, emperor. The Taichin is not on this city. It's on the name Tiberius. So even if you're touching his name, you could apply it to the city. But he wasn't the tablet of Eretz Yisrael. You could apply the meaning of his name. The name that he's called. People have called names. Anything. The is Mephirish. Why is it no, but the Gemara says, the, the Lashon of the Gemara is, Lama Nikra Yeah. Right. We're not debating his name. Okay. It's just interesting. Yeah. Oh, oh, but you see a vart. You could see a vart. The whole world says it was named for this. But now I'll tell you the real reason it was named Tveria. There's a real reason. You know, there's a Hishtalshalus. There's a... Huh? Perhaps, I don't know. You mean that he was good looking? He was good looking. <laughs> we have a statue of him, by the way. We know what he looks like. <laughs> yeah. That Arizal says about Jewish names. I don't know if it's said by Roman yeah, emperors. Rome, they have it. They used to mint coins. They all minted coins with their images. So we have an image of most of the Roman emperors. Huh? All, probably all, yeah. We know what everybody looked like. No, no, you could see. You could uh, take a look. You'll see what Tiberius looked like.
the huge statue that the head was removable, and they just changed the head. Okay. Okay. He actually lived a pretty long life. I think he lived almost till 80, 77, huh? Yeah. Herod was a great builder and he rebuilt a lot, right? And one of the things he rebuilt was uh, was the city of Tver. The Yavitz writes, Rabbi Yaakov Emden writes, Rabbi Yaakov Emden lived in the 1700s, and he writes that the Chachamim did not like, he was a big Oved Avod Zara, obviously, he was an idol worshiper, and he even expelled the Jews from Rome, I'm just going to add that. Uh, he claimed that they're involved in converting, and they converted some very famous queen in, in, in Rome at the time. So they didn't want that Tveria should be named after an Ovid Avodazara. So they did this specially, they did this specially to say, no, we have our own reasons for the name. In other words, it shouldn't be, by Jews, it shouldn't be associated with an Ovid Avodazara. That's what the Yaivet says. Another interest. No, is he good looking? <laughs> Give a look, here we have Tiberius. Tiberiasa, is he good looking? You see, it's fascinating, huh? When did he die? 37 after the Common Era? 37 AD. AD. That's 37 CE. 37. He was 77 years old. The Jews revolted against Rome in the year 66, which means 30 years after his death. He died 37. Churban Beis Hamikdash happened exactly 30 years later, 30 and a few years later. This was the last error of the Second Beis Hamikdash under the Roman Empire. Uh, Hordus died a few decades earlier already. And Hordus, as you know, was a, a lunatic par excellence, a great builder, a great architect, a, a tyrant and a dictator of the highest order. And he's the one who rebuilt Tveria and apparently named it uh, Tiberius, even though he died before he became emperor. He became emperor only after Augustus, right? Who was the emperor before him? Augustus. Okay. Little Roman history here. And his successor was Claudius? Claudius, no? Caliglia, no, no. His successor was Caliglia. Caliglia was succeeded by Claudius. Claudius was succeeded by uh, Antho or something, Otho. Another two, and then comes Vespasian, who destroyed the second base of Mictus with Titus, who succeeded Vespasian. That's the next few decades. The Roman emperors, yes. Zogdi Gemara Vaiter. Amaz Aed is Aed is said, Katroin zu Tsipoiri. Rabbi Yochanan said, Rakas is Tsipoiri. We argued Rakas is Tveri. Why is it called Rakas? Malay mitzvah's kirimen. Even the empty ones are full of mitzvah's kirimen. Or it's elevated. Ra uh, he said Rakas is Tveri because it's elevated. But Rava, Rava did not like that. He said that it's Rakas is Tveri. It's because Malay mitzvah's kirimen. But what about Tsipoiri? So Rabbi Yochanan said, Rakas was Tzipoyri. He said, is it Katrin zu Tzipoyri? Lama nikra shmoi Tzipoyri, she yeshevez b'roi shahar ketzipoyr. As we mentioned before, it's elevated. It sits on the top of a mountain like a bird. That's why it's called Tzipoyri. Very interesting way to name a city. It's basically the bird. Why is it the bird? Because it is like a bird. Huh? Yeah, it's still it's still perched on top of a mountain. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very close. Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi is buried in Sipiri. Yeah, yeah. In Sipiri, it's close to. I was there once. It's it's debatable. It's like a lot of kvarim. There's a debate over there. I think so. Says the Gemara Vaita, ah, it was very healthy. That's why Rebbe went there. It was very healthy for ear because it's elevated. The Gemara says here it's elevated like a bird perched on the top of a mountain or like the bank of a river that's elevated from the river that's lower. So that's why sick people used to go there. So he says, Katrin is Tsipoyri. Says the Gemara, the Kitrin Tsipoyri. Kitrin is really Tsipoyri. Is that the case? Do you really believe this? Kitrin was in the portion of Eretz Yisrael that was given to Zvulun. Tixiv, how do we know? The Pasuk says in Shaiftim, Zvulun loy hoirish es yoishve kitrin ves yoishve nahalal. Vayeshev aknani bekirba vayiyu lamas. It says that Zvulun did not expel, he did not drive away the inhabitants of Kitrin and Nahalal, 
Instead, they used to pay them taxes, but they remained there. So it's clear that Kitroin lived in the realm, it was the territory of Zvolen, and we're arguing that this Kitroin is Tzipayri. That's what Zeir is teaching us. Tzipayri is not like Rabbi Yochanan said, Rakas, because we already said Rakas is Tveria. Rather, Tzipayri is Kitroin. What's the problem now? The Gemara has a fascinating tradition about Zvulun. Zvulun Misraim al Medais of Hava. It's known that Zvulun was dissatisfied with the lot that he was given in Eretz Yisrael. He was not happy. The Shenema, the Pasuk says, Zvulun am cheref naf shelamos. Zvulun was a people which shamed its soul to death. Meaning, there was a battle that Dvoira led against Sisra in Shaiftim. And in that battle against Sisra, Zvulun really sacrificed his soul. He wasn't afraid of death. Cheref nafshe lamos. He really put his soul on the line. He, he jeopardized his life. He put his life in danger. He was ready to die. However, Chazal had a tradition on this Pasuk that was very different because of the end of the Pasuk. It says, Zvulun sacrificed his soul for death. V'naftali al sada. And Naftali is on the high places of the field. What's the connection? You're praising Zvulun for going to war and really doing the best they can to fight the enemy of the Jewish people. Right? And then it says Naftali is on the heights of the field. What's the connection? So therefore there was a tradition by the Chazal that during the war Zvulun got to see the lot of Naftali. And when they saw the lot of Naftali, they became very upset because the lot of Naftali was situated on the high places of the field, meaning it was filled with fertile orchards and gardens and vineyards and fields. And when Zvulun saw it, he became very dissatisfied. You know, when you go to the other person's kitchen, yeah, whatever happens, and you come home miserable, and he became dissatisfied with his own lot. That's what the Gemara is now going to explain, that Zvulun was a people which... Huh? Yeah, that's going to be discussed now. Zvulun Misrayim al Midois of Hava. He was upset with his lot. Shenema Zvulun am Cheref Nafshe Lomos. This is, this is very sharp. Cheref Nafshe Lomos means he was, he, he shamed his soul to death, meaning he was ashamed with his life. He, he was so miserable. It's like, I hate everything about my life. At Kach. That's what other people's, uh, realities can do to some people. Uh, 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 well, we're going to discuss this. We're going to discuss this. So the Gemara is going to say, so the Gemara says, Matam Mishum de Naftali, al Sada. Why? Because he compared himself to Naftali who was on the Meroi Sada. That's basically what happened. Okay. And Chazal say, here's what happened. Amar Zvulun Lefnei Kodesh Baruch Hu Zvulun tells Hashem, Ribayna Shalaylam, La'achay nasata lem sada yisukramen. My brothers, you gave fields, vineyards. Li nasata yiharim agvoyas. Me, you give mountains and hills. What am I supposed to do? Go hiking? La'achay nasata lem arotzis. Li nasata yam anaharis. My brothers, you gave lands. They could plant. They could produce. Real estate. Me, you gave lakes and rivers. And Zvulun says, why do I have to have such bad fortune? Cheir if naf shalom, it'd be better to die and not have, any, have anything. Oh my Allah, Hashem tells Avram, uh, Zvulun, kulam tzrichim l'chaydei chilazen. All your brothers will need you for the chilazen. We know that the chilazen is a creature, like a type of snail or, or a fish, not much a fish, but a type of creature that emerges from the sea. It climbs up into the mountains and it's very valuable. Why? Because... It's the creature from which we get the tchelas. The blue dye for the tzitzis is produced from the blood, from the from the secretion, which is like an ink, like a turquoise, a turquoise colored tchelas, you know, blue indigo, which they had to have in order to dye one thread in each of the corners of the tzitzis. Tchelas that comes from the chilazin, and the chilazin came out from the sea, from the water in the plot of Eretz Yisrael. Where do we see this? Shenemar. The pasuk says. Hmm? Well, he says, Kulam Tzrichin L'chai Yedei Chilazen, they all need you for the Chilazen. Rashi says that Chilazen Oyle Minayam Laharim V'tsoivin B'dame Tcheles V'nimker B'dame Yekarim. It comes up from the Yam to the mountains, all in Zvulun's territory. You take the, the secretion, the blood of the Chilazen, and you dye the tzitzis with the unique color of Tcheles, and it's sold, it's very precious. The supply is not as great as the demand, and therefore it was a great financial source of income. What are you complaining, Zvulun? 
You're worried about your economy. You're going to do great with your chilozen. Shenemar. The yam is the ocean or the yam kinev? The yam around Zvulun. Zvulun said, you gave me all these yamim and aharas. What do I need them? I need fields. I need vineyards. You know, you, Zvulun lived on the port, right? Zvulun l'chayf yamim yishkain. Right? Zvulun lived on the port. He lived by the yam. It says yam mim un aharais. Yam mim. Huh? Vos? Somebody says something about uh, you want to know which ocean he lived by? So here's how it works. The Chazonish writes, the Chazonish Masech Teshvius writes that the Metzudas David says in Yehoshua, the Metzudas David, that the Nachla of Zvulun was not on the entire width of Eretz Yisrael. It started on the west by the Mediterranean. Okay, but in the east, it didn't go all the way till the east. That's what the Mitzvah's David says. So he says, Eba Zoy, how did he say Yamim Unaharais, which is in the plural? Yamim Unaharais, because really he had one Yam, which is the Yam Hagadol, the Mediterranean Sea, which is on the west. So he says the Zvulun was at the west of the Yam Hagadol, and he had a river, it's the river by Yekonam, also on the plot of Zvulun. Unless you say that Zvulun also was not only on the west, but also on the north. And then perhaps he also had another yam, which is the yam Sifchi, which is northeast of Eretz Yisrael, and two rivers. Huh? Sifchi. Yeah, that's the question. It's yam because the Chilazon, the... That's the Tani River. Huh? Yeah, what's it called? Tani River, right. Yeah, perhaps that. So he says maybe Zvulun had that also, but the Metzudas David says he had the West, the Mediterranean, and, and that's where the the Chilozen came, right? The the famous Radzine Rebbe, when he wanted to, uh, he was looking for the Tchelas, right, in Italy, he was looking by the Mediterranean for the Chilozen. Gemara says, comes up once in 70 years, created the whole Tchelas controversy. In any case, the Dead Sea, yeah, okay. Says the Gemara, Kul and Sikh Lahadeh Chilozen, Ah, Shenemar, Shenemar, the Pasuk says, Moshe Rabbeinu tells before his passing, Moshe speaks about Zvulun and he says, Amim Hari Kro, let's read the whole Pasuk. Amim Hari Kro, Sham Yizbechu Zivchei Tzedek, Ki Shefa Yamim Yinaku Usfunei Tmunei Choyl. All the nations will gather to your mountain. Why? For Sfunei Tmunei Choyl. What's Sfunei Tmunei Choyl? What are these three precious things? Tani Reb Yosef. Sfune is a chilazoin. Sfune, which means things that are covered, safun, this is the chilazoin. Tmune, zutris. It refers to tris, which Rashi says the tuna fish. Tris, Rashi says, is the tuna fish is going to be by you. People like tuna. People like tuna, you see. Even Moshe Rabbeinu speaks about tuna. If you're wondering why you were forever eating tuna sandwiches, this was the great Jewish food, tuna. Okay, choyel zuchis levana. Sand. This refers to white glass, meaning that the sand in Zvulun's territory was of extraordinary uniqueness. It was fit for the producing for producing white glass, special sand, special type of sand. Sfuneit munei choyel chilazoin tuna fish and special sand for white glass. Amar lefonov. Yeah, he's telling Zvulun, stop complaining. So you don't have vineyards, but look what you have. You have tuna fish. <laughs> but you know, when you're upset, you're upset. He says, who's going to inform me? They're going to come over with a boat and steal the chilozoin. It's not mine, it's in the yam. They'll take tuna. They'll take sand. Who's going to tell me that I could make money? Oh my Lord. The pasuk continues, "Sham yizbechu zivchei tzedek." Was it "Sham yizbechu zivchei tzedek"? The pasuk says, "What's pshat?" There, they will offer sacrifices of righteousness. What does this mean? It means as follows: "Simen zeyehelecha." There'll be a sign. If somebody takes a carbon that's stolen, it's not good. It has to be zivchei tzedek. I can't steal an animal and bring it as a carbon. God says this is worthless. If they find the chilozen and take it without payment, it will not benefit the business because the color produced by the dye of the chilozen when it's stolen is going to be ruined. 
or Rashi says also possibly the sand will not produce this type of precious glass. So therefore you don't have to worry. It's not going to work. Okay. So this is what Hashem answers Zvulun. So the Gemara says, if so, Isol Kadaitach Kitrin Zutsi Poiri, Amai Misraim Al Midoisov, Avi Tsipoiri, Milsa Da Difetuva. If Kitrin is Tsipoiri, and Kitrin was in the plot of Zvulun, why was he upset? Tsipoiri is better than everything else. It's a Gavaldika, it's a Gavaldika, it's a Gavaldika city. Why would he be upset if it was Tsipoiri? As we said before, they used to bring the sick people to Tsipoiri to get healthy. A lot of people lived there. It was very, very wealthy and affluent. The whole Gemara and Ksuvis about Tsipoiri. Dov Kuv Gimel, why was he upset? You're going to tell me the Lesbos of his Cholavodvash. He said, he felt that it doesn't have the blessing of Eretz Yisrael flowing milk and honey. It doesn't have that blessing. That's what he was complaining about. In other words, it doesn't flow with milk and honey. Rashi says that in some places in Eretz Yisrael there were a lot of goats. The goats ate figs that were oozing with honey. They were flowing with honey. And then the milk comes from the goats and it mixes with the honey and it creates a stream, a stream of milk and honey. Zavas Cholavodvash. The milk of the goat Milk mixes with the honey and it creates zavas chal. And they didn't have that. Maybe that's what that's what they were complaining about. For Amr Eishlakish, that's not true. Eishlakish said, "Look at the chazili zavas chal v'advash the chalar of the Yisrael. Look at the zavas chal is chazili zavas chal v'advash the tzipori." I saw the flow of milk and honey in tzipori. For Havi Shisha Aser Mil Al Shisha Aser Mil, it measured sixteen mil by sixteen mil. A mil is approximately a kilometer. A mil is around two thousand amos around 1,100 yards. So 16 mil is between, I don't know, 9 or 11 miles. It's a, it's a lot. And this is 16 by 16. 11 miles by 11 miles flowing milk and honey. What willst you? What do you want, Zvulun? Oh, maybe he was upset that it was not as much as his brothers. <laughs> It was a lot. I myself saw the flow of milk and honey in the entire land of Israel. It was the equivalent of the area between a place called Beikubi and the port of Tulbanki. Twenty-two parse long. And six parsa wide. That's how large was the streams flowing milk and honey in the land of Eretz Yisrael. A parsa is four mil. If a mil is approximately a kilometer, a parsa is four mil. That means a mil is 2,000 amas, but a parsa is four times that amount. So if all the areas of Eretz Yisrael where milk and honey flowed combined, this would be the total area. In other words, he's saying, I've seen the flow of milk and honey of the entire land of Eretz Yisrael, and this is the equivalent. I guess that's a lot. Of all the areas of Eretz Yisrael. Rashi teaches, Rashi says here, not that it was concentrated. If you're going to combine together all the areas, not that they were together, if you would combine them together, this would be the size. 22 parsa in the length and 6 parsa in the width. That's what he says. A parsa is 4 mil and this is what it would be. Huh? 22 length, 6 in width. So it's basically, it's basically uh, 132 square parsa. 132 square parsa. And remember, each parsa is four kilometers approximately. And you have 132 four parsa. That means Tsipoiri is 16 by 16. So what's his point? If Tsipoiri is 16 by 16, it means that Tsipoiri, that Tsipoiri has close to an eighth. 16 by 16, that's what it means. It means that Sipoidi is around an eighth of the 
quantity of the flowing milk in Anim Eretz Yisrael. And Zvulun is one of ten tribes. And he has basically around an eighth. So that means he has much more portion, disproportionately larger than the other Shvatim. So what is he complaining about? Still he's complaining. This means Tzipoyri was not in his plot. So how can Zaira say that Kitrin is Tzipoyri? That's what the Gemara Tain is. So the Gemara says, no, 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 no. He had all these blessings. He wanted fields and vineyards. Dekanami, Dixiv and Naftali, Almeroime Sada. He saw Naftali in the high places of the field. That's what bothered him. Shma Mina. When you have your eyes fixed on something, God could give you everything in the world. You know what I mean? But I need, I need that. And you're done. And you're you're upset. And when you're upset, you're upset. And you're anxious. So therefore. That's what happened. It's about Sadas and Khramam. Ah, you have so many good things. I have the Chilazan, I have tuna, I have white glass, I have tzipoiri, I have flowing milk and honey, 16, 16 by 16. All's good. But nonetheless, he is still upset despite the 16 mil and the 16 mil of Zavas Chalavudvash. Fascinating. I guess it's a powerful lesson in life, right? What do you think? New Zog? New teach us, teach us. Is that no matter what we have, we're always looking for the one thing. But what's the... Uh, well, that's not only really bad, but you want Alexis, you can't live without it. That's commanding. Cheref nafshei lomos. People become disgusted with their lives. They become it's disgusted. The thing is that it looks like the Shemir had all the Norse... Uh, Oh, you mentioned Caesarea. Now listen. Amr Rebbe Rebbe said, "The Ekroin Teyakir. The Ekroin Teyakir is there's a pasuk in Svanya talking about different cities in the Tanakh, trying to identifying them. So the Navi in in in, in Svanya says Ekroin Teyakir, which is like a you know called Loshen Neifel Aloshen, right? The word follows the word Ekroin will be uprooted. The city Ekroin." was going to be uprooted. What is this? Zu Kesari Bas Edoim. This refers to Caesarea. Caesarea is called Ekron. It's a city known as Kesari. It's called Ekron. In, as a hint that it's going to be uprooted. Why? It's Bas Edoim. It's a daughter of Edoim. Edoim Chazal associate usually with the Roman Empire. Greeks and Roman Empire. It's situated between the sands it was surrounded by sandy, it is surrounded by sandy, sandy beaches. So it's, uh, now when Yeshua comes into Eretz Yisrael, we see that Ekron is within the borders of Eretz Yisrael as a Philistine city. Ekron is a city of Plishtim we see in the Tanakh, but the Greeks took it over. And as the Gemara will say, they were driven out by the Jews and later was conquered by Rome. Rome took over Judea. They also took over Caesarea. And Rome is considered the ear to the nation of Edom, founded, of course, by Esau, the brother of Yaakov, the son of Yitzchak. Caesarea is called the daughter of Edom. She was like the proud of pride of Edom, sits by the beaches, and of course, sitting by the beach, unless, if you're Zvulun, you're complaining about it. But apparently the Edomites liked the fact that they were surrounded by sandy beaches, and they could sit and drink the pina coladas and the lattes at their beaches. This was a source of harassment to the Jewish people in the days of the Greeks. When the Chashmanoyans prevailed and they triumphed, they called her the captured tower of Shir. What does this mean? It means they... Um, the 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 captured tower of Shir. Rashi says Kvushas Migdal Shir, Kvushas Migdal Shir. It was captured by the Chashmanoyim. So I guess the tower of music, the tower of music, or some say Tzur, was captured by the Yevonim. Amir Rabbi Yosi Bar Chanina, my Siv, the pasuk says in Scharia. The Pesach says in Scharia about another city called Tsur or Tyre. Tyre, T-Y-R-E, 
Tsar, which was from the main Edomite cities conquered by the Romans. It says about it, Vasiroisi dom of Mipiv, I will remove his blood from his mouth, Shikutsov Mibain Shinov, his disgusting things from his teeth, Venishar Gamhula Lakeinu, and he too shall remain for our God. So he says like this, Vasiroisi dom of Mipiv, God says one day I will remove his blood, Zebes Bamaya Shalan. This refers to their house of Bamaya which was their main idol worshipped by the Edomites. Bamai also comes in the word platform. It was the platform where they would uh, throw the blood of their offerings. So I'm going to remove their blood. Shikutsav mibain shinov, their disgusting things from their teeth. Zebes Galya Shalan. This is their house of Galya. V'nishar gamhule lekeinu, elu bateknesius, u batemedrashus shebe'edah. These are the shuls and the houses of learning in Edom, where the Jews would study and pray during Golos. This is going to remain, this is going to remain God. That's what's going to happen. So fascinating. But the Knesis about the Medrashus Shabbat Edom, from Beis Bamaya and Beis Galaya, they will become Bate Knesis and Bate Medrashus. These places. He continues, it's going to be like an aluf in Yehuda, like a chief in Yehuda, and like an ekron in Yehuda. These are the amphitheaters, the word theater, and the circuses of Edom. The princes of Yehuda are destined to teach Torah there in the public. In other words, Edom is going to be an Aleph, but Yehuda Aleph comes from the word learning. It's their main theaters and circuses are going to become the greatest Bate Medrash in the future. That's what he's saying about these places. That these Edomite cities, the Avodah will be removed and their greatest theaters and circuses will become places of learning. Yeah. Theater, yeah. Teater, teater, teater. And he says, he finishes, Amr Reb Yitzchak. Reb Yitzchak says, Leshem, which is mentioned in Yahushua, the city of Don, Zu Pamias. It's also sort of Pamias, which is the source of the Jordan River. Ekroin Te'aker. Ekroin, as we said, is Zu Kesari Bas Edom. Shei Hoysa Metropolin Shal Malachim. Caesarea was considered the mother of royalty. Metri in Greek, met, met, Metropolis. Metropolin is two words. Metra is the mother and Poilin is leadership. It's called Caesarea, which is associated with the word Caesar, 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 yes, Caesar, because the Roman Caesar uh, conquered it and ruled over it. That's why it's called Caesari. Ikadami de Mamalchi. Some say that's where they used to raise the children of royalty. The Ikadami de Mukmamine Malchi. And some say from there they would appoint the royals. This is Caesari, Ekrain. Kesari vi Yerushalayim. Let me tell you about Caesarea and Yerushalayim. Im yoyma lecha adam. If somebody is going to tell you, if somebody is going to tell you about these places, that what? Charvu shteyen. Both were destroyed. Al tamen. Don't believe them. Yashvu shteyen. Both are settled. Al tamen. Don't believe them. Charvu kesri vi yashvu Yerushalayim. Charvu Yerushalayim vi yashvu kesari tamen. Somebody says Caesarea is destroyed and Yerushalayim is built, or the other way around, then you could believe them. Meaning, he's saying Caesarea and Yerushalayim are ideological enemies. They can't both prosper because the values that reigned in Yerushalayim were the anathema, they were poisonous for Caesarea. And the values of Caesarea were poison for Yerushalayim. If Yerushalayim is built, Caesarea is destroyed spiritually. If Caesarea is built, Yerushalayim is destroyed. You understand? They can't coexist. If this culture prevails, this culture can't prevail. They can't coexist. They're two opposite cultures. It's a very powerful idea. They're not co both coexisting. Fire and water can't coexist. If Yerushalayim is built, Caesarea is in ruins. If Caesarea is built, Yerushalayim is in ruins. Why? So if you're familiar with Caesarea, you can go see the amphitheaters in Caesarea. 
the gladiators were there, the amphitheaters were there, the circuses were there, and basically the value of human life was no. Slaves would fight lions and tigers and other slaves and bears and animals. Uh, the stabbings, the circuses, the gladiators were there. The cruelty, the barbarity, which Roman was famous for. Caesarea was a capital city for this. You could still go to the theaters and the gladiators. You see they have a lot of remnants of it where they would sit and cheer. Right? Jews used to go there on Shabbos because if you cheer it for the victim, they sometimes let them live. Shenema, the puzzle says in Yecheskel, Imala hecharava. Tzur said, I will get filled from her destruction. Meleyazu charvazu, meleyazu charvazu. Yerushalayim gets filled from her destruction and she gets filled from Yerushalayim's destruction. In other words, Yerushalayim's oxygen comes from Tzur's destruction. And Tzur's oxygen comes from Yerushalayim's destruction. I'm s- yeah, but I'm saying Tzur is Tzur of Edom. It represents the Roman Roman power. Rivka is told by the prophet, she has two babies in her womb. One nation will become strong from the other nation, from its defeat. Kedusha could become, gets its oxygen from the defeat of the venom of the clipper and the other way around. The other way around. Let's finish this piece. Another thing Rabbi Yitzchak said, my Diksiv, the Pasuk says in Yeshaya, Yuchan Rasha Bal Lomad Tzedek Be'eretz Nechoychos Ya'avelu Bal Yiregeyo Sashem. I just read the whole Pasuk. The Pasuk says, Let favor be shown to the wicked, yet he will not learn righteousness. What is this? Amar Yitzchak Lufnei Kodesh Baruch Hu Riboy Neshaloylam Yuchan Esav. Esav is my son. Yuchan Rasha. Let Esav be shown grace. Oh my Lord, Hashem says, what do you mean? Russia who? He's a Russia. Oh my Lord, Yitzchak says, Ba'lama Tzedek. He has not learned Tzedek. Meaning, is there nothing positive you could say about him? This is a remiss to the debate between Yitzchak and Hashem. Rashi says, Allah in here, Ein Mishi Alamad Alavzchus. Nobody could say anything nice about him. So Hashem answers, In the land of the uprightness, he will do things that are crooked, meaning he's going to destroy Yerushalayim. Esau, who is the father of Rome, is going to destroy the whole area. If so, he will not behold the majesty of Hashem. For Amr Reb Yitzchak, my Siv, the Pasik says, this is a Pasik in Tehillim. Al Titain Hashem Ma'avaye Russia. Hashem, do me a favor. Don't fulfill the desire of the Russia. Zmamay al Tafik. Don't remove his nose ring. He has a ring in his nose. Al Tafik Yerumusala. So shouldn't so he doesn't get exalted forever. Don't grant Esav the desires of his heart. Don't remove his nose ring. What does it mean, don't remove his nose ring? What is this? Rashi says that they would put a nose ring in a camel. In a camel, they would tie a nose ring and that protected the person from being damaged and it helped you from being harmed and it helped you lead the camel. So he says, don't remove the nose ring from Esav. Zu germamya shel edoim. So the Gemara is writing that when Yaakov, when David HaMelech says in Tehillim, yeah, please, God, don't fulfill the tithes of Esau. Don't remove his nose ring so he could live forever and be exalted. It was Yaakov saying, don't follow all of Esau's desires. What's pshat? Zmamay al tofik, don't remove his nose ring. Zu germam shall edoim. This is a royal province of Edom called Germamya. If they would go forth and spread their wings, their ambition is literally to destroy 
the entire world. So he's begging him not to remove the nose ring, the iron ring placed in the nose of an animal to pull it. And without it, you can't control it because it's, it's, it's very powerful. So as long as it's inside, you could control it. So the Gemara says, who is this talking about? One particular place, Germamia Shal Edom. Okay, now the fascinating thing here is, it says Germamia. This Gemara was written uh, around 1700 years ago, explaining a Pasuk that was written by Tehillim. And the Vilna Gon writes... They bring here the gears of the Vilna Gon. That instead of Germania, it has to say Germania. Hagoy Sagro Mesech to Yumid Yud. He says, not Germania, it's a Yud. It's a Nun instead of the second Mem. It's Germania, Germany. He proves it from Targum Yoinison in Beresh's Perik Yud. Right? He speaks about the genealogy of Noyach. So you have Shem, Chom, and Yafes. One of the Bnei Yefes is Goimer, Goimer, Gimel, Memresh, right? Which many associate with Germania. And uh, the Vilna Gon has also a Pirish of Masech Tenegom called Elio Rab, and he says it's the Germany of his day. The Yaivitz, Rabbi Yaakov Emdin, the Rav, uh, who, lived, uh, who lived in Altuna in Germany, also says in his Hagos that it's not Germania, it's Germania. Now you have to understand. The Vilna Gon passed away in Tovkov Nun Ches. 1797, Sukkot. The Yaivitz passed away uh, in 1776, a few decades before the Vilna Gon. Okay, the Yaivitz was born in 1698, same year like the Baal Shem Tov, and he passed away, uh, uh, he passed away seven, 1770s. The Vilna Gon passed away 1790s. Germany was Germany. <laughs> Germany is 1700s Germany's, right? With a lot of very respectable and influential and brilliant Jews, including Rabbi Yaakov Emdin, who lived in Altuna, which is a city in Germany. And they were goiters here, Germania, and they said that there was a special request of Yaakov from Hashem. I'm asking you, don't allow Esav to fulfill all the tithes of his heart. Don't remove the nose ring, which is the inhibiting factor on which city, on which country? Germania, because if they let loose, the whole world will come under destruction. Uh, this is a Gemara written 1700 years ago. Germania, yeah. But here you have the word Germania. Germania shall Edom. You know, they felt that Germany was also connected to Edom, which is an ear of, of the Roman Empire, which is Goimer from, this, from Yefes. Yefes. Problem is Yefes, Edom is Esav. Esav came from shame. Goimer comes some Yefes, right? So, um, ah? no, because we know the Gemara always says that Sancheriv dislocated, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's to say that in Germania there was nobody from Edom because they remained Yefes. You didn't have that, that purity of, just like today, you, you have to take a ger from Mitzrayim, right? Why? Because Bosan Cheirev of Bilbal Oilam Kula, even if somebody who lives in the regions of Ammon and Moyav, they're not considered the ancient Ammonites and Moavites. And the Gemara says the last thing here about Germany, unbelievable, Amr Abchama Bar Chanina, Tlas, Meya, Ktiri, Tage, Ike, Begermamia, Shel Edom. A number. There are 300 crowned princes in the Germania of Edom. 300 crowned princes. There are 365 chieftains in Rome. They used to divide it according to the year of the sun, the orbit of the sun. Every day one group goes forth to encounter the other group. The 300 crowned princes of Germany are fighting with the 365 chiefs of Rome. Omaktel Chadmenai, one of them is killed. Umetardi Luk Mamalka, and they would then have the trouble of appointing a new ruler in his head. So the 360 in his stead, so the 365 chiefs of Rome correspond to the 365 days of the calendar. Each one ruled on a specific day of the year. One of them was killed. They had to appoint, they had to appoint a new one. So he says over here, the Pshat, I mean, it's, it's quite a, a fascinating Gemara here. What did I say? Oh, here. The Masif the Gemara brings. Oh, so the Malbim says 
that we know that Germany and Rome had tremendous wars, right? Because Rome, Rome ruled Germany and uh, Germany fought Rome. And it says even that there were 300 princes. He connected actually with history, that there were tremendous confrontations between Rome and Germany. They, they ruled a big part of Germany and Germany really wanted to throw them off. This is towards the end of the Roman Empire and they helped defeat, defeat the Roman Empire. The Svasema says to say that every single day, I mean, the way it sounds here is basically that every single day they fought and one of their chiefs were killed and therefore they always had to have a new, they always had to have a new king. So as says, well, every day there was a new king. Nobody ever heard in history of such a thing. He says Reb Chama was probably talking about the Sarim Shalmaila. He was probably talking about the war in heaven because he says, and every, every day there was a new Mapala for Edom, for Edom Lamaila. Okay. We'll stop here. Mitzvah Hashem will continue tomorrow. Before, about Tiberias, is the Roman name, you know, they translated into Hebrew. The Rebbe Hashem said about Kaiser Wilhelm. A Wilhelm. Kaiser Wilhelm. A Wilhelm. He seeks concealment. He didn't want to be under Germany. He ran away in 1914. 1913, he ran away. Le, le, the war broke out in August 1914. Tofresh Ayan The Rebbe Rashab lived in Lubavitch, which is in Belarus. Right? And when the Germans, the Germans were advancing, he said he doesn't want to be under Germany even for a day. And he ran to Rostov. That's why he ran to Rostov in 19, uh, 1915 by the Dan River. That's where he passed away in 1920, 100 years ago. So uh, he didn't want to be under the Germans. The Second World War, my father told me, he remembers the Jews in Russia, you know, Belarus, Lithuania, Russia proper. They said in the First World War, the Germans were very nice. They're much better than the Bolsheviks. They welcomed the Germans, the Second World War. There was a big argument. Some said, don't, don't escape because they couldn't believe that Germany had a tremendous reputation in Russia. It was developed, sophistication, opera, music, science, most PhDs, city of wisdom, Russian, yeah? The communists destroyed it, but, but Germany was, uh, was, the economy was in ruins, but Germany, huh? I mean, it's like uh, the Gemara could have said a thousand countries. Yes, yeah, the time of the Gemara, Germany wasn't the the huh? a garnish. There was a time in history that Germany had 300, 300 princes. The Gemara says a three hundred. Yeah, yeah, I saw, I saw an encyclopedia. Three hundred. I have to see when. Yeah. 300 princes three, that fought. They say also from the Vilna Gon that uh, Germany is Mizera Amalek, which is also connected to this Gemara, because if it's Germania Shal Edom, Edom is Esav, and Esav was a son, and Esav was a father of Aliphaz, who was the father of Amalek, right? Timna Hoysa Pelegesh Aliphaz ben Esav. So that would connect to They say from the Vilna Gon that Germany is Amalek, or at least part of Amalek. For, 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 for Germany, for Hitler, if there was a Jew alive, he couldn't, uh, he felt that civilization was, I think Himmler once said, it's much like the Gemara here with Kesar and Yerushalayim. The German race and the Jewish race can't coexist in the world. If we prevail, they have to be out. And if they prevail, we're out. Huh? Yeah, Nishna Vasaina, Nishna Saina. It's uh, if you exist, I can't exist. And if I exist, you can't exist. In other words, we're not just different. We're not different. When you're here, I can't be here. There's something about me that must must Huh? We're tapped into higher truths. Yeah, huh? it's like basically, tapped into higher truths. Basically, we are we are like a, a life witness of Hakadosh Baruch and they were. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A Jew is the living witness of God. Atem Eidainu Um Hashem, and you got to kill the witness. They're the opposite. Hitler wrote that we. Hitler said or wrote that uh, we have to get rid of the Jew and his life denying ten commandments. 
Jews are the, they gave the world, they cursed the world with conscience. They gave us the conscience. Matzpun. It's not matzpun. It's not Yeah. And he says, he says also we circumcise the world physically and emotionally. Physically we, the bris, the bris, you circumcise the body instead of being proud of it. And the second thing is you circumcise the heart by giving it a conscience. Guilt. Some things you're not allowed to do. Yeah, conscience. I'm not allowed to. The Oibemensch, it's not, might is not right. You circumcise the, you circumcise the human soul by giving it a conscience. So everyone is now limited, nebuch, and, and confined. I can't just kill you because I'm more powerful than you. That's not a good thing. <laughs> so, uh, so that's, he says, that that's what they, they cursed the world with a conscience. They gave the world a conscience. Fascinating. Fascinating. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so the Gemara says that if the, the nose ring is removed, they whoever wanted to destroy the whole world, one person wanted the whole world under him, the whole world under him. Where are you? Ashaknanim, Shamanim Epigdoilim. Here it's Almanaya, Almanya, Germany, Almanya, Hemaknanim, Shaborchu, and they stopped via Malaritz. So he says, ah, huh? he says the Knanim ran away and that the Germans. Kam Kachat Sarfas, he. Farnasia, the Medim is a Sfar da Spamia, the Zuhi Golos Titus, the Zaisan of all the Ossid. So the Nevu, they're all going to come back. From these places. Yeah, Almania is Germany. So the Ebenezer says they're the Knanim who ran away. Golos Titus, Arces Almania, Vashkalonia, Franca, Svart, Spania. Evadi Pedekalov, he speaks about the exiles to Europe. Spain. No, no, but it says in Evadia Aleph, he brings the Jews, he says, who were in Germany and the Jews in France and the Jews in Spain, and they're all going to come back. Well, Asid Lover. Almanya, he says, is Ashkenaz, Germany. What should have we known? Hindsight is 2020. But the Vilna Gon and the Yavits, they weren't after the Holocaust. The Vilna Gon passed away 1797. 1797, the, the war broke out in 1939. The Yaivitz passed away 1776. Nishta Hindidyar, 1776, almost 150 years before the Second World War. The Vilna Gon lived in Lithuania. Rabbi Yonis and Ipschitz lived in Germany. Rabbi Yonis and Rabbi Yonis lived in Germany. You should say it here. Yeah, I saw somewhere that Zvulun was worried... That Zvulun was worried that, that, that he's not going to have Parnassa. I saw it somewhere. Uh, Zvulun knew that Yisachar's learning is dependent on him. And therefore he was very afraid that he's not going to have Parnassa. And that's what he was complaining about. It wasn't jealousy. One of the Mepharshim said that. It was not jealousy. The Sif Sechachamim. Sif Sechachamim says, Zvulun l'shem shamayim neskaven. Zvulun was doing it l'shem shamayim because he had a job to be Mefarnas Yisacha who's learning Torah and that's why he was so upset. He was very afraid that Yisacha will starve and the Torah won't be uh, taken care of. That's what the Zerachamim writes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah, Yishikoyach. I saw it, I forgot. Yeah, I knew I saw it. I'm saying why he was so upset. Zvul, it says Zulun was so upset. He was upset not because he was just selfish and jealous, but because of this. And the fact that the theaters and the and the amphitheaters and the circuses are going to become shuls and bati medrashas, that's, that's powerful. Because Taisvis asks, you know, Taisvis learns that... Uh, that uh, these are bate avodas kechavim and and but but sakise is dirty places. He says, why 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 would you learn why would you learn Torah there? 
So Taisus asks, why would they want to turn it into Bate Midrashas? Like, Taisus says, these dirty places, why are you going to learn Taira? Disgusting places. So Taisus says, no, it's, it was places where they would gather to meet. That's going to be, that's going to be converted. That's going to be converted. But it's a fascinating thing that all these things are going to be converted. So that's why the Aruch says that it's theaters. Theaters and uh, gladiators. They used to make all their plays with animals and and, and comedies. And Bate Karkasiyas were uh, bars, like clubs where they would drink. They would drink. Those places are going to become Bate Madrish. I guess when you have a Siyam Ashas in MetLife Stadium... It's a gewaldic thing. All the theaters of Rome. Yeah, and all the huge, huge halls of drinking and theater and this are going to become Bate Medrash. and Karkis Toys is places where met to meet. The Aruch says it's amphitheaters. Amphitheaters and circuses, or places where they drank. No, no, theater, theater. Yeah, the word theater comes from teratroyos. You know, they would have sports, and they would have gladiators, they would have fights, they would have competitions, they would have games. And all this is going to become, it's going to become Bate Knesses and Bate Magrashos. They use people as animals. They use people as gladiators, gladiators. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kesari and Yerushalayim can't coexist. It's, uh, no, 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 water of life. United. So, Brengt of the Gemara, of the Gemara, he says that it says in Chavis Alavavis that fire and water can't exist in the same place, right? They can't. It says, Kachla Yishkin Avas Hashem. I can't love God, yeah, and love promiscuity and immorality and material excessive materialism. One can't live if the other lives because they're opposites. You know, you can't be a dedicated father to your children if you're out drinking every night. <laughs> you love. You have to choose your love. You have to choose where you're going to be in life. Where your love is going to be if you're going to be dedicated to MS or to Sheker. You say, I have Emmets and I have Sheker. I'm dedicated to everything. It doesn't work. Either you're here or you're there. Either you're in Kesari and you're Shalayim. Imola HaKarava, this one. And Fakert. It, it, it lives from the other's destruction. When you challenge a Taiva in, in Chumriyas and Elam that gives Kayach to Kedusha. And when, 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 when Kedusha gets defeated, it gives Kayach to the Klippa. You understand? I live, it's not just I can't live with you. I live from your destruction. My oxygen is your death. Like in fossils, you know, when, when animals die in the fossils, right? The bones, it becomes nutrients for the earth. Their death spells new life. That's how God made the world. Huh? The tzaya too. The excrement too. So the death of kisai mala hachar l'oimil oim yamats. That energy becomes kedusha when 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 you skafia. Now there's such a tremendous struggle going on in the world. Between you have to choose. Sides. You have to choose what type of life you're going to live. A chayim amitim or chayim of sheker. You can live both. There's a lot here in these gemaras. A lot of stuff here. We get mamshich zaymargi. We'll be mamshich tomorrow. Bezer Hashem. This class is brought to you by the yeshiva.net. Please help us continue the classes. Make even a small contribution at www.theyeshiva.net slash donate.